Happy Saturday morning. Hope you're having a good one so far. Welcome, one and all. This is Garden America. We are starting the weekend together. I'm Brian Maine. I'll never learn, will I? Never, never learn, will I? The old, uh, yeah, the old laptop audio feeds back. Anyway, I'm Brian Maine, along with my good friend, Tiger Palafox. And, of course, uh, right next to Tiger is John Bagnasco. There's John. Looking good, everybody. Anyway, welcome to your weekend. Hope you had a good week. We are, uh, we are guest-free today, which means a lot more of you, a lot more of your interaction on uh, Facebook Live. Questions, comments, uh, however uh, you want to do it, that's up to you. Whatever direction you want to take the show. We're going to be into spring before too long, which means things might be heating up in some areas. Other areas still going to be cold. Uh, speaking of cold, good morning, John. You were cold this morning when you walked in. You were all bundled up, but look at you now. <laughs> it- the high today in Fallbrook, I think, is fifty-seven. The high? That's the, the high? high. Really? Right. I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be warmer today. No. Well, they did say it was going to cool off at fifty-seven. That's yeah. chilly. Oh, burr. <laughs> and and those across <laughs> the country. That's why I'm wearing a sweater. It's like twenty-nine or like exactly. Yeah. yeah. We, we. But first of all, we admit that we're wimps. Yeah. That we would never claim anything else. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, I did bring in a lot of oranges here. Yes. Which. We wouldn't be able to grow if we were in those areas. Now, where are it was we teasing degrees. people across the country right now? They they see these oranges there in front of us, and you know, year round here in San Diego, we just go out and pick what we want. Yeah. And well, I mean, you know, oranges are normally a winter kind of ripening fruit, so they really only grow in places that don't get that frost. And then, just this year, John, I don't know if you saw an article about Florida getting a severe freeze on their orange crop, and. Um, uh. You know, so, you know, it's just the people, because there's lots of parts of Florida that don't freeze. So these are just, I think, the farmers that are pushing the envelope in terms of growing citrus. But um, Florida is one of those areas, though, where they get, they can get those northern winds yeah. that come down every now and then and will just freeze uh, an entire crop. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, really, probably what? Southern California and Florida. Can they grow oranges, do you think, in parts of Texas? You know, I remember, yes, parts of Texas grow yes. would be citrus, Would be southern too. Texas, right? right. Yeah. Grapefruit, right. things right. like that yeah. in the Rio Grande Valley. But I remember when I was uh, little, and the oranges from California were, I mean, looked like the oranges you brought in, right? Uh-huh. But the ones from Florida were a little greenish. Oh. And the marketing ploy from Florida... Uh, was that the people in California dyed their oranges. <laughs> really? And that theirs were natural. Oh, wow. Well, I don't think Tiger dyed any of his oranges. No, I don't think so either. You've got a, a Valencia, <laughs> right? One, right? Yeah, and, there's um, the the kind of more yellowish ones are look like to be Valencia varieties. Right. But it is a tree that was in my backyard when I bought the house. So I really don't know what it is. Um, and then the ones that are more greenish, they have that little button on top, which means they are some kind of navel. Right. And, yeah. and you know, the other ones, the, the lighter ones could be confused as, they look like grapefruits almost. Almost, yeah. Color-wise. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that's the funny thing is when you move into a home and they have trees, is, you know, fruiting trees, you just sometimes can't identify right. exactly what they And you don't know the history. Are. Yeah. And what it's going to look like or what's going to grow. I always, I always find it awesome when... Somebody moves into a home and then they bring in like a lemon john the size of your head and it's all bumpy and rough and they're like, <laughs> What is this? And it's like the ponderosa, you know, it's the root stock. Ponderosa's not a root stock. Or what's the one that gets That's the big the rough thorns? Lemon. What's rough. the one that gets the big thorns? It's the root stock. Rough lemon. Rough lemon. Yeah. yeah. And it's just but like Ponderosa the... lemon is a huge lemon. Oh, okay. It's about the size of way bigger than a softball. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Rick says it's thirty. In Star, Idaho. Ooh. Kathy, 36 in Neyland. 36. So we weren't too far off. Hey, Veronica hey. says she's looking. Today we're talking about avocados, right? Oh, yeah, right. we, we got to set the topic. Avocados. But Veronica says she's looking forward to tomato mania. Is yeah. that going on at your nursery it's, today? What time is it right now? It, it is 8.10. It is 8.10. There was, there was a line at the morning. What? And so they're already, already in store they shopping They were lined right up now. down the sidewalk? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting to get in. Waiting to get in to get the the... New tomato varieties. We should have, we should have done our remote today there. <laughs> yeah, right. That'd just to add to the, the circus atmosphere, right? Yeah, exactly. You know what you should start, I think, <laughs> in Mission Hills? Okay. That could become nationally famous 
is copy that uh, tomato festival they have in uh, Spain. Oh, where we just throw tomatoes. Throw down tomatoes the street. at everybody, right? Yeah, That'd be great. And, and then do your own version of running with the bulls. Oh, it makes perfect sense. Right, the two go together. Yeah. Why not? Wait, now in Spain with the tomatoes, that that's in like these. Is is don't they just get in the middle of a courtyard? And then they throw them and at they each just other, throw them they? at each other. They just have a big tomato fight, right? I think they have truckloads of tomatoes that they just bring in. But it's in like a big courtyard. Yeah. It's not like running of the bulls where you're running down no, the street. No, no. But it's. it's it's just Why a do big I think it, that, that doesn't happen the same time, does it? No. I feel like they're wearing the You're same outfits. You're thinking that tomatoes are red, bulls are going to chase well, they, red. I was going to say, I feel like they... I feel like I've seen pictures and they're I, wearing the same I, I outfits. I know, exactly. So yeah. I think that's why we think they're at the same time. That said, uh, we... Things uh, must be kind of yeah, dull right. in... What's that? In Spain, things <laughs> must be dull that they have to invent these. So, you know, right, hey, right. let's run from some bulls. That'll be fun. And then they throw fun. tomatoes at each other. No, yeah. no, no. They, they go extreme. When when Janine and I were there, yeah, we were just touring around Spain for a month, and we show up in this little village, and we're staying the night in this little village, and we're talking to people, and they're like, "Oh, you're gonna come to the town center tonight," and we're like, "Okay, like what's going on?" And they're like, "Oh, we get a bull, and they tie fireworks to its horns, and light them off, and then the bull just goes crazy." Gosh, and I'm like, I "Can't do that." <laughs> yeah, that sounds crazy. So yes, I think that they just create a lot of things to do. <laughs> I, I, I'm speechless. I have no speech. Yeah, yeah, we just we tie a bunch of bombs and TNT to the horns of the yeah. bull. We yeah. light it, see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. So. Hey, Rick is impressed with your endless summer I, T-shirt. I saw that. Yeah, Rick, we're tr- we're doing our best here to uh, keep that endless summer thing going. So thanks for checking in from Idaho, Rick. Hey, um, what else do we have uh, to talk? To, well, a lot to talk about. Yeah. Um, um, so I want to admit that if you were taking care of business, Tommy. yeah, Go if ahead. you did get the newsletter, that was my fault. Um, Justin will be our guest next Saturday. I had next told Saturday. John who puts the newsletter together and he works so tirelessly and put together an excellent newsletter. I don't work tirelessly anymore. <laughs> I get tired when I do it, but, um, just gotta let you so know. if you're, if you're, saw the newsletter and then you're wondering why maybe Justin isn't going to be on He's next this week. morning. He's next week. I gave John the wrong info. But we still are going to talk avocados right. this week. And, and I think it's good because now you know what's going to be happening next week. you got the newsletter. It's yeah. not happening today, but you can tell everybody, <laughs> hey, you like avocados? Got a guest next week. But we're going to start the avocado theme today. Hey, I see our buddy Ed Livo is listening to us. What's Ooh. happening, Ed Livo? Well, you know, I, <laughs> excuse me. I'm getting all choked up here. I was looking at his website, uh, Birchill Nursery, and they're now selling citrus and avocados. I think, yeah, I think you remember him telling us he was. They he were was getting ready to do that, that kind of like he did in his previous business. But so now they are. Yeah, they're live. It looked like it. I was looking at the varieties and was thinking, God, what do I need? Were there any of the ones, the avocados that you were looking for? I'm still looking for Nabal. Yeah, I cannot find Nabal. Yeah. Did you did you check Clausen like I told you or no? No. Okay. No. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have it. No. But you can't check Clawson. Right? You gotta go yeah, over there. You gotta there. go there. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right. And you might find it. There. I think you we have an know. avocado question already. Okay. Do you... do avoc- Lisa wants to know, do avocados have a natural leaf drop about now? <laughs> yes. Or is there something wrong with her <laughs> her Zumatron? What is a Zumatron? Oh. It sounds like something that would clean your floors when you're not home. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, John. That is a good one. I wonder if she means Zutano. Zutano, probably. And it, but I mean, there's there's hundreds and hundreds of avocado varieties. Right. So most people are aware of Zumatron. There could be a Zumatron that I'm not. We aware talked of. about this a couple of weeks ago. Most people are aware of two or three different kinds right, of avocados. Right. But yes, nat- a leaf drop is natural right now. They, at least in Southern California, all the avocados have burnt leaf margins because of the salt buildup in the soil. And all those leaves are dropping this time of year as the plant be- plants begin to flower and new fresh leaves come on. I was going to say, yeah, the instant that you start to see those bud and flowers on the right. tips of the um, growth is you're going to start to see the plant looking very right. poor. Um, and people get stressed out because they're thinking, oh, like it should be looking good. It's going to get fruit soon and all this. But that's what it does is put all of its energy into this cycle loses its leaves and then i mean for for me in san diego i've noticed right around like what late 
April, it starts to like look brand new again. The whole yeah. the whole tree looks yeah. like brand new, fresh, fresh. So it goes through has a little tizzy yeah. fit, and then it gets gets its act together. Yeah, but but a big mistake that people do make during this time of year is they see that and then they douse it with water. You think it needs water? And I mean, we're getting rain and it's cool, so I don't think it. it it's not a sign it needs water. No. You, 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 right. There's nothing you can do to the tree to make right. it keep its yeah, leaves. Leave it alone at hey, this time. We have to take our first break. Normally, we come back with our guest, but as Tiger mentioned, our guest is next week. So we'll open it up uh, to you, those on Facebook Live. And we'll and come back course, with the quote of the week. Yeah, John's got the quote of the week. We can't forget that. Those on Biz Talk Radio, this is last week's show. Those on Facebook Live, this is this week's show, which means you can interact on Facebook. We're going to take our first break along with uh, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. I'm Brian Maine. Stay with us. This is Garden America. We are back from the break, a bit longer on BizTalk Radio. Thank you for supporting our many sponsors on our nationally syndicated show through uh, BizTalk Radio. Thank you, Stephanie, keeping us on the air. Those on Facebook Live, you get to watch, you get to listen, you get to hear. And right now, you're going to hear John's quote of the week. It's actually not John's. It's somebody else's. (laughs) But uh, John's responsible for the quotes of the week here on the show. (laughs) And the quote's from Frank Bruni, who is a writer for the New York Times. Yes. And he said, I suppose there are people who can pass up free guacamole, but they're either allergic to avocados or too joyless to live. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always, now, growing up in Michigan. Oh, I told you my avocados experience were, with avocados. They were went, foreign as a to kid. you, right? Michigan and avocados? I remember going into the supermarket and my mom and mother and I saw a, a display of avocados. And it's like, what are those? You know, why don't we buy one? Bought it, took it home. Cut it open. It's all hard. <laughs> ate it, and it was it was terrible. It's like hard, and <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know anything about it. I saw a Tiger. You'll appreciate this. I saw an avocado meme, right, where uh-huh. this avocado is talking, and and you know about ripening avocados, yeah. right? Right. So the avocado says, "Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet." Okay, now, whoops, too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So true. Hey, Rick wants to so know what true. area of California produces the most avocados. What area? Southern California. Southern California. San Cal. Diego, um, Orange County, up into Santa Barbara. Yeah. And they produce about 80% of the U.S. Uh, supply of avocados, but 80% of our avocados come from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> At least they do again. A couple yep. weeks ago, there was a ban there on was a ban That's on right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So wrap it's, your head around that. You know, I guess if we're going to talk about avocados, we should break it down to begin with to there's three classes of avocados. Okay. There are Mexican avocados, Guatemalan avocados, and uh, West Indian avocados. Most of the one, we grow very few, if any, West Indian avocados here in California. They like uh, more tropical conditions, and those are the types they grow in Florida. But the main difference in the fruit is that, and, and <laughs> it's funny because if you grow up on those avocados in Florida and in the Caribbean, they're, they're huge. I mean, right. they can be up to five pounds a piece. Wow. But they're watery. Right. Yeah. Very bland. Right. Very, yeah. And no taste, right? Right. Well, that's what Californians say. They say that th- those those avocados are watery, but people in that area say that California avocados are oily. Oh, really? I like yeah. the oil, though. That's what, that's better. Well, yeah. That's the why oil, we describe the it as buttery. Taste. And, and it's, yeah, buttery. buttery. And it's healthy fat, correct? Avocados? Yeah. yeah. Healthy yeah. fat. Yeah. yeah. Ed's comment on the West Indian avocados is West Indian are yuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just it, right? Is when you when you see these avocados and you're coming from California or Mexico, right? You see this West Indian avocado. It's the size of a cantaloupe. And you're just so excited because right. yeah, you're, you're, you're accustomed to this small avocado and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to bite into this. I can't wait to just make a giant bowl of guacamole yep, out of it. Right. But then, like you say, like, I mean, there is no amount of salt and lime and cilantro <laughs> that you can add to that guacamole to, make, to give it any taste. To give it that 
it, it, it is very watery, I feel, in flavor. Yeah. But, you know, one advantage to those avocados, <clears throat> if you're a Weight Watcher, is they have, uh, there's some varieties that have less than half the, avo- or half the calories of California avocados. Really? Yeah. yeah. So you sacrifice taste for weight? Depends. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it, like I said, if you grow up with them, yeah. I, I guess you're used you're to, used to. I, I, I'm just amazed, too, at those West Indian trees to hold that fruit. Yeah. Because they're very heavy. And and we all know in California, they don't produce as many avocados on a tree as they like, you know, the, the Guatemalan and the Mexican varieties. Right. But, to I mean, you see a fully loaded avocado tree here and it's just sagging, you know, the branches. Mm-hmm. And, they, and in a farm, they're using sticks to hold <clears throat> up the branches right. and all of that. Yeah, that those trees. The but West in the Indian West trees. Indies, they've they're like cannonballs hanging on the tree. <laughs> now, along your property, across the way, didn't that used to be a huge avocado field? Across Where, the street used to be. They're all gone. They're now. all gone. And right. that was and that my was, property used to be avocados. Was it was that like a single owner that had the land? Yes, it was. Yeah. But my neighbor still has avocados. Do you wish you had avocados on your property? I'm going to get avocados, and I told you I want a navel. <laughs> Which is a, uh, well, let's talk about yeah. Guatemalan and Mexican avocados. If you're in California, those <laughs> are the type you're going to be growing most, right? Yes. Uh, Guatemalan are not as hardy as the Mexican. The Mexican are going to be a little bit hardier as far as the temperatures that they'll take, um, freeze temperatures anyway. Now, some varieties like uh, uh, Mexicola Grande mm-hmm. will take temperatures down to 20 degrees. So if you're in an area where you think you can't grow avocados, uh, you might want to try a Mexicola Grande. Uh, Mexicola looks different than a regular avocado, though, right, Tiger? Yeah. They're they're, they're purple. <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, purple, purple. You know, we talked about the watery avocados, and Ed says you can almost drink them easier than eat them. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest funny. avocado tree, is it in Whittier, California? I think Rick is thinking about the oldest lemon tree. No, I, he is it avocado? Be, he might be right on the avocado because. Oh, I don't know about that, but I do know the oldest um, navel orange. That's what I yeah is. It's there at the is it the Mission Inn? I think it is. Yes. The first yes. three that were brought to California were planted there, and I think two of them are still alive, and that's from the late 1800s. Carol says hi from Tucson. She loves avocados. And who doesn't? I love it. Love avocado. So anyway, we're back to yes. Guatemalan versus Mexican. Right. Usually the the Guatemalan are going to have better flavor, but again, you've got to grow them in virtually frost-free areas. Um, avocados need good drainage, which is why you see them all on the sides of hills. Now I'm, you know, maybe Ed knows this because he's listening. Do they have root rot resistant? Um, avocados now. I, their avocados are all grafted, and I wonder if they have root stocks now that resist root rot. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm not I don't 100% know. Percent sure. Now you say you see them gro- growing on the sides of hills because of right. drainage. So, so right. Yeah. yeah. the The adage used to be that if you can dig a hole, uh, you can plant an avocado on the side of a hill. Well, and Brian's aware of this because I, you know, you've said it a number of times. Avocado root systems are what? Very shallow. Very. Right. I mean, you can trip over the root system if you walk too close and, to a tree. And I've even heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, but some people tell you not to even rake the soil around a lot. It. Like, don't clean the the soil a lot around an avocado because just the raking action disrupts can the some, root system. Sometimes disrupt the root system. So well, you want to leave let the leaves lie there to form a mulch because right. since the Roots are so high on the surface, they're going to dry out if there Quicker. is no water. Yeah, right. so sure. you just let the leaves fall and create a mulch. Be- because they're, su- they're susceptible, obviously, to the sun. Well, just, yeah, I mean, like you're saying, there's such a shallow form of root. So, and that's the other thing, too, that's hard is, you know, most people think of a tree, fruit tree, and they want right. to have like these wells, deep water, infrequent. And, you know, avocados would much rather have like almost like a mister system. Yeah, around the around base it. of it, yeah, and then just water it, you know, every yeah, few not days. Deep. You don't need to be deep. Maybe I like that. Mist, misting system's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like or it. create your own rainforest yeah. for the yeah. avocados. Exactly. Now you know, up until the '70s, when I came here in '77, the uh, 1977, the number one avocado 
in California was Fuerte. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Haas was was beginning to be grown, but was nowhere near as popular you know, as Fuerte. The Bonanza did a lot to uh, emphasize the Haas avocado. That was bananas? But no, Bonanza. The oh, TV bananas. show Bonanza. Oh. That was Put little the Haas avocado. No, that was little Haas, not Haas. <laughs> little Haas, huh? Hey, yeah. we're gonna take a break. Rudolph yeah. Haas is the person who founded the uh, uh, Haas avocado. Rudy, Rudy Rudy Haas? Rudolph Haas. I gave him credit for so much more than that. We're gonna take a break. And again, hey, keep those those questions and comments coming right there on Facebook Live. Those on BizTalk Radio, you can always hear our show, watch our show live every week. Go to our Facebook page, which is a Garden America radio show. Watch us live, interact. The rest of you on Facebook, welcome. We're going to take a quick break. Quick break. Not a bake, but a break. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Back after a very quick break. Uh, thank you for those on uh, BizTalk Radio tuning in every week and listening to last week's show. Okay, it is avocados. And, of course, uh, as we look at the, uh, the people tuned in right now, a very popular subject. Most of you do love and like avocados. And we do have some comments, John, on Facebook. Yeah, you know, Veronica mentioned, by the way, that we uh, talked about, and this is why it's important to listen to our show, Brian, right? Absolutely. She was going to go out and clean all the leaves away from her avocado today. And now yeah, she's not. Now she's no, not. No, don't do that. No, you can do something else. Start a puzzle. <laughs> Start a pu I guess people still do puzzles, right? You know, know, for some reason, my son and I, Jesse, have been on this puzzle kick where we do a new puzzle like every two weeks. Well, the puzzles you're doing are really cool. <laughs> that one you brought in over Christmas. Oh, it was like when had pieces those were little... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've done two since then that we're off on a different subject right now, but I've done two since then that were really different. One was my favorite, which was the the uh, out of the frame uh, Noah's Ark picture, Oh, which the picture was great. And if I can just give you a rough idea, it's like a picture frame of Noah's Ark, but then animals and things are crawling out of the frame. Oh, that's neat and water spilling over the side of the frame. So on one side, you might have just the rear end of a giraffe. No. Because <laughs> no. they're crawling out of the frame. No, no. Oh. But you would have a monkey putting his hands over the frame and one completely out of the frame. And who doesn't like monkeys? But anyway, the hard part about this puzzle is every single piece was identical. Oh, wow. Same size. You could, you could put the whole puzzle together and not have one correct. <laughs> <laughs> so we finally got that, and that was really difficult. And then I bought one on tropical fruits. And this one had probably a dozen different tropical fruits that were huge uh, pieces, but just c cut out in the shape of the fruit. Oh! You put those in the puzzle, and then you'd and have then to you put a, these little— Around them? My son and I called them crumbs. <laughs> little tiny pieces that would go around them. Oh, wow. So anyway, that was that's what we were working yeah, on. Yeah, I don't think I have patience for puzzles. Yeah. If it can't be done in 10 minutes, I'm moving on. <laughs> yeah. Well, Veronica oh. says she does like puzzles, but now that she doesn't have to clean away her leaves from her avocado, she's going to plant tomatoes instead. Lenora wants Good to plan. know if she can grow or what kind of a smaller avocado she can grow in uh, a container. Little cut? I would, you know, if it was me, like if you had a whiskey barrel, I think mm -hmm. I might plant uh, Holiday. Yep. Holiday is a, it's called holiday avocado because it begins to ripen at Labor Day mm -hmm. and continues to ripen all through, I guess, even up to the following Valentine's. So it covers all the holidays. So it's the holiday avocado? Right. And if you plant it in the ground, it has kind of a weeping effect. So it's easy to pick the avocados. They do list that one as being able to grow in a container. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There you so go. So that would Lenore. be a good one. Then there's a there's a couple dwarfs. You mentioned little cotto. The uh -huh. problem with little cotto is, I personally don't think the flavor is as great, and it does have a tendency to be alternate bearing. Mm -hmm. So okay, maybe so try. Um, uh, is it Gwen? 
I don't know. Is Gwen the the other dwarf? There's there, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a dwarf, but I know I know of the Gwen. Haven't seen the Gwen recently. Well, they're starting to to mark it. Is it he, see, I always confuse Jim with Gwen. I know they're spelled differently, Brian, <laughs> but the only difference is a W. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mike wants to know if you can um, uh, use. Can you graft using another? Wait, let me let me back up here. Can you graft an avocado on another root stock? Yeah, like, yeah, meaning exactly. Like, you know, like normally, sometimes on fruit trees, you can take like a different apple root stock right. and use it for an apricot thing. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You can, and, Mike. And you know, we were talking about how most of the avocados at one time were fuerte. Mm -hmm. A lot of those fuerte groves got cut down to trunks. I mean, that were maybe you know a couple feet tall and grafted over to Haas. Right. And before the break, you were talking about Haas. Right. And was it um, uh, Rick that mentioned the um, avocado tree in Whittier? Mm -hmm. So that's where Haas came from. The, from, the, from that tree in Whittier? Oh, well, that's where Rudolf Haas planted it? Correct. Okay. But that tree is no longer, that tree is no longer alive. So, okay. you know, I don't know if there's another tree. I think, I think but, John talked about the Valencia that might still be alive in that area. The Washington right. Navels. Oh, is it Washington Navels? Right. Okay. Right. But yeah, so. Valencia is um, an area in Los Angeles. Yeah, the, that, that tree, you know, is pretty much the parent of almost all the, I mean, it, all the avocado, Haas avocados. Trace the lineage back but to that tree. even other varieties come from that tree as well. So, like, you know, the it, um, Haas avocado came from Whittier, California. All right, we had a, um, uh, Carol wanted to know if they could raise them in the Tucson foothills. Ooh. It would depend on how cold you actually get. I think it gets cold out there. But if night, she went, you it? know, there are, do you remember... Was it 15, 16 years ago? I thought you were going to say the year 15, 16. <laughs> I don't remember. No, we had a guest on our show from uh. Texas, and he was growing avocados. Can't remember his name right now. But he had avocados that were hardy in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And they would take temperatures down to 14 degrees. Yeah. And you just mentioned earlier certain avocados that can take freezing. Well, that's, 20. yeah, the, the Mexico La Grande well, for 20, and then yeah. there's, what, Stewart and So my, several, answer, my answer would be yes, then. You you probably could. Well, it depends it, on how long the period is. Okay. And then also large avocado trees, mature avocado trees, will take more cold than a small, young avocado tree. Yeah. So if you were planting an avocado in that area, you'd want to remember the first years first few years to keep it covered and protected in the winter in case you got a oh, yeah. really bad yeah. cold snap or like lenore was thinking of grow one in a container that you could just wheel in the garage yeah. if it got really keep cold warm, well i was right? just gonna say that i mean you know for the people that do want to grow an avocado i mean you know you just create your own orangery you know and wear a room where you can put them in for the winter time and protect them <laughs> yeah <laughs> little you guys greenhouse. see keith's question you want me to read that? Yeah, go ahead. Keith, it is, it is my understanding that I can mow my 35-year-old hybrid Bermuda lawn down to the dirt without doing any damage. Assuming that is true, here's my plan. Mow to the dirt, aerate, spread, J and B blend, and water. If this is true, my question is when, and now it says see more. I've got to click the rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Stay with me. I mean, yes, so far it is true. Uh, let's see. Is it true that my question is, okay, here's the question. When do I start? I was thinking April or May. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Probably May. Yeah. First of May. I was thinking May 2nd. But... <laughs> yeah, but you're getting so close to planning for Cinco de Mayo. True. It's May 1st, but... May Day would be the best. <laughs> and, and, I would, and it's not even so much the mowing down and the aerating. It's more like the seed you're, you're, you're putting down and stuff to time it out properly that that would be the better time of year to do it and then the mowing down and the aerating um yeah i mean that's that's going to be a really good time to kind of just kind of do all of that and yeah bermuda lawns you can really treat yeah, them yes, badly Keith. you know what i mean so yeah you can't no they take no abu problem abuse. there they take a lot of abuse right yeah a lot of abuse 
But you don't want to to cut them down when it's cold because they're not going to grow. Yeah, I was going to say right, just be, look like a dirt field. Right, for... they'll recover better when the weather's warm. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, why I said May 1st. And Mike says thank you for the uh, answer to the grafted question. Okay. Lila wants to know which avocado would be best for the valley flora of Poway. Oh. Uh, Stuart bacon... Mexico La Grande or something else. Now, the something else avocado has always been my favorite, <laughs> but uh, I don't know how well that would do. You know, I have a rose called something special. <laughs> do you? Yeah. It was uh, Sam Agreedy the Fourth. <laughs> something special. Yeah. Huh. That's um, what about, how about that? What any, about that? How about that? Any of those would be good. Yeah. Probably, it, probably is a good area to grow them, even in the cold low-lying areas of Poway. You right. Know, it's not too, too cold. So. You know, uh, another one I thought that would be great for a container, if you can find it, and there's there's an avocado nursery in central California, I think up in the Bay Area, that grows the Don Galagli avocado. It's also a great one for a container. And at one time, um, I recommend it because the flavor on it is really good, but at one time they were selling it online is an indoor avocado. So if you lived in snowy areas, wow. you could grow this indoors. I don't think that panned out. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Uh, show is flying right by. Keep those questions coming. Noticing a lot of people tuned in this morning on Facebook Live. Whatever is on your mind, questions, comments, post them right there on our Facebook page. We are talking about avocados. That's the topic. But if you want to stray a little bit, that's fine as well. I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco. Welcome to Garden America. Back after these messages from our friends on BizTalk Radio. We are back, and again, a very short break on Facebook Live, a bit longer on BizTalk Radio. Now, those that are tuned in on BizTalk Radio, this is the final segment of our number one. You've got news coming up top of the hour. Hopefully, your market carries our number two. Both hours is ideal. And again, if not, go to our Facebook page, Garden America Radio Show. Catch us live every single Saturday morning. We kick things off six minutes after eight on the West Coast, Eastern Time Zone, 1106. You know, um, even though... The number one avocado now is Haas. Uh, there's some negatives about the Haas avocado tree that I think, for one, it, it's huge. It's a huge negative? No, it's a huge tree. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it spreads really wide. So there are some varieties that are more upright growing. And I think one that's similar to a Haas, Tiger, you might have to correct me if I'm wrong in this, but I think Surprise mm -hmm is one that's more upright growing. Correct. Yeah, so that would be... More of a tree shape. Right. Than a bush. Right. Giant bush. And then I, you know, Brian, you know I think bigger is better. <laughs> Always. <laughs> and that's why I want to enable... This is coming from the guy that grows um, some... <laughs> oh, man. The miniature roses or what was... Your roses... The, what are the ones that you like in there? The miniature ones, right? The miniature, miniature, miniature roses? polyantha. Polyantha oh, roses. That's yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> well, polyantha roses. The bushes are big on some of them. True. Anyway. Sorry. Back to bigger is better. Back to yeah. bigger is better. I like big avocados. And, you know, I'd mentioned Nabal, and Ed had posted online, what about Reed? Reed is an excellent avocado, but I think I'd like to have both. And then, I'm not sure, but I think Anaheim, which is not available anymore, might even be bigger than that. But by bigger for California, I'm looking at two pounds, which is pretty good size for an avocado, right? That is substantial, yeah. 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 A two-pounder. So, two-pounder, yeah. So I kind of like those. And I'm thinking of putting in at least two of them if I can find them. Well, I was going to say now we're talking about planting them. One thing we haven't hit for people to know is that, like other fruit trees, avocados come in types. So there's A and B type avocados. And for for us, it's usually not a problem because we live in the avocado capital of the United States. The universe. And um, if I plant an avocado in my backyard, I could care less which variety it is because somewhere within pollinization... I'm going to have gonna a neighbor, fruit, right? and I'm going to have a neighbor that's going to have another avocado tree. 
now like we're talking about Tucson and mm-hmm. parts of Texas or people that are growing up different. in pots, it's different because you're going to need for some varieties, you're going to need a and a B tree to create pollinization. Um, so sometimes it's, and I mean, are there any self fertile? Yes. Yeah. Okay. A lot of self fertile avocados. And for I'm trying to think of pots. most common varieties are going to be self fertile to some extent, but you can, you know, double or triple your production if you do plant an A next to a B. So you need to find the self fertile that work in those cold areas. If you're only going to do one right. avocado. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you get an A and a B variety. And like John mentioned, whenever you get an A and a B together, you're going to get better production. Right. The self fertile still aren't going to produce as well. Um, I think avocados are like the first woke fruits <laughs> because the difference between an A and a B is that – that and I never remember because it's not that important to me. <laughs> but an A avocado might be a female in the morning or, of one day. Right. And, and then, then in the afternoon, it turns into a male. And, it's just like today I feel like this. Yeah. And the B is the opposite. Right. They're, you know, male in the morning, female at night. Just <laughs> just whatever whatever it feels like right. that day, Whatever right? it feels Lisa like. Lisa is yeah. asking the best soil for avocados and containers. Um you want to use something that's going to drain really well, so don't use I would say stay away from moisture control yeah, soil. Any of those like premium yeah. Potting soil. Yeah, stay away. Anything with peat moss, I would. Yeah. You need to add say. perolite? Or just use a cactus mix. And you know what's funny well, is that... Even, I wouldn't use a cactus mix. I think that might be drained too quickly. But use a good mix like... Um, well, I would use either Ocean Forest or Happy Frog if you're using... Uh, what's the name of that company? A Fox Ocean Farm. Fox Farm, Fox Farm. Soil. Yeah. Or you have some that you use, yeah. I mean, at your nursery, right? That are from different companies, yeah, from EB Stone or yeah. you know, and and they do sell a citrus avocado soil mix, and it is very similar to the cactus mix. But like is you're that saying for might, planting in the ground? Is or for, for planting in pots? You can't plant in pots. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. and um, you know, it's very similar to a cactus mix. But like you're saying, you know, cactus mix. Does drain very almost very well. Yeah, almost immediately. It might be a little bit difficult for you to keep it moist sometimes, um, but as we mentioned, you know the the products that are heavy in peat moss or the products that are heavy in core, you want to avoid because it just retains that moisture so much that in in the people always get to this thing where they go, oh well, I won't water it that much, and that's fine. You you can control that. But you cannot control rain and sunlight. And in those times when it rains for two or three days, you can't dry out that pot. So you have right. to think about those times, not just when you water it. Mm-hmm. So, Ed mentioned that in the north, most avocados seem to be self-fertile. He says that uh, the flowering cycle gets twisted in the north, as so many things do, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, in the north, is he talking about I think he's San talking Francisco about like area? the Bay Area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bay Area, maybe up a little yeah. little further. Are we caught up on the questions? No. we. we, we they're still coming in. Mary, fast and furious. Or, uh, Carla's taking us off topic here. That's fine, Carla. And she says, diverging to lawns, what is hybrid Bermuda? I'm assuming that it's different from the 30-foot strands of Bermuda that's pl- plaguing my garden. Yeah. There's a lot of different hybrid Bermudas for different right. things. You know, some they grow them shorter. Right. You know, so that way, like she's saying, you know, you don't have these big, long strands of Bermuda grass. Some are yeah. more compact growing. She's talking about wild Bermuda is her problem, right? The right. weedy stuff. The weedy, you know, that kind of stuff. Which but, comes up from seed. But hybrid Bermuda does not grow from seed. Yeah, they just come For the from most plugs. part. Right there, I guess there are some hybrid seeds. Hey, this would be a good time to bail out because we do have a uh, break coming up. The break on Biz Talk Radio is news, top of the hour, back at six minutes after. Hopefully you carry us uh, for the second hour, both hours one and two. Those that are watching on Facebook Live, it's going to be very quick, very quick break. So do stay with us. Topic today and even next week with our guest, avocados. But, of course, people are kind of straying uh, from that as well, and that's perfectly okay. I'm Brian Main. We've got Tiger Palafox, John Bagnesco. Thank you for tuning in to Garden America. We're coming right back. Stay with us.
Hello once again. That was a quick break on Facebook Live. I love it when we, t- we turn the mics off and we're talking and people are, are looking at us and they're like, what, what are they talking about? I don't, I don't hear anything. <laughs> we are back now. Those on BizTalk Radio, welcome to the show. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you're having a good weekend. Or maybe it's during the week when you're listening or watching this show because after this show, in about two or three hours after the fact, uh, our IT guy, Daniel, posts this show and every show on our YouTube page, Garden America Radio Show, on our YouTube channel, Go there, like, subscribe, watch, rewind, pause, do whatever you want to do. It's a great way to go back and refresh yourself, as John likes to do, refresh. Re- this is Hour 2 for those on BizTalk Radio. Those yeah, on but- Facebook Live, we're just going to keep on doing it. <laughs> Before the break, we were talking about Bermuda lawns and um, hybrid Bermuda. Right. And a lot of uh, different hybrids are grown for height or control. Um, and then some are even... You know, for longer seasons. You know, I know that there's a few oh, stay hybrids. stay green longer. Yeah, that grow for a longer season depending on right. where you live. Um, so, because normally Bermuda turns brown as soon as yeah. that co- weather cold. gets cold. Yeah. What was her question again? It was what? What about hi- hybrid Bermuda? Yeah, she wanted oh, to yeah. know if it was different than the long strands. The okay. Long yeah. Strands. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, depending on the hybrid, it's there not as coarse. Either the blades are usually thinner, makes a a nicer lawn. Yeah. Personally, I would never plant Bermuda. At, no. No matter how how nice it seems to be, when you turn your back, it just it goes out of control. <laughs> but but I will say for because I have experience with this for families that have dogs, oh, yeah. Yeah, dogs, kids, dogs right and them. active kids. Right. It's perfect. You your fescue lawn will turn to a dirt right. pit real quick and it does not recover. Where a Bermuda lawn it will recover. It, is a Bermuda lawn can you compare it to a really tightly woven rug in terms of the is it more dense? Mm. Than than I mean, you say fescue? I don't know. I mean, I mean, what do you think, John? I wouldn't say it's more dense, but it just Bermuda, Bermuda lawns recover via rhizomes. I think Brian means that it's more stoloniferous. Is that what you're trying <laughs> well, to say? Well, stoloniferous, you, you could call it that. Yeah. I, prefer to, I prefer to compare it to a tightly woven rug, but yes, John. But, um, but yeah, I mean... It takes more abuse. I, it I don't, I just it takes more like, abuse, and it reproduces from rhizomes, where fescue lawns reproduce mostly from seeds. And so for it to get a chance to actually repair itself... Um, you you know you just have to wait longer. You have to wait for those. You have to wait for it to repair itself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, where the Bermuda lawn grows quicker and right. repairs itself better. And if you ever wanted to actually control your Bermuda, John, you can just use turf lawn ester. Really, I was telling that my na- my neighbor was over the other day, and uh, <laughs> she was asking me, you know, I've got this bare area, and what should I put it here? And I said, you know, the best thing there is to put in a turf lawn ester. Right. Because <laughs> Her name was Esther. Yeah, and of course. Lawn. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, it's too bad people just can't understand our inside jokes. Hey, it um, would take much too long to explain. Ed brings up a point that I was also going to mention but forgot to, and that's if you, you know, avocados do best on hillsides where they have great drainage, yep. right? But if you're not on a hill or you don't have that big a yard, uh, you can just plant it in a raised bed, which will help. Oh, yeah. Like, a, like make a box yeah, and then, yeah, improve but that, the drainage. If you're not going to put it in a container if you want it to go into the ground. Yeah. And and people were mentioning uh, earlier that there are some uh, disease-resistant rootstocks, root-rot-resistant rootstocks. But they're extremely expensive. I'm not sure what extremely means, okay. but I would think if you only had one tree and, there's no and price. the rootstock added... Seventy dollars to the cost of the tree. I mean, you'd yeah. probably be willing to pay it, right? If you wanted yeah. an avocado, yeah, especially sure. at three dollars a piece for an avocado. Avocado is definitely one of those fruit trees that make it economically sound to grow your own. You know, yeah. When, when, when we talk yeah. about an apricot or an apple or an orange, right? You're like, oh, the investment into that tree versus what you go and buy them from at a grocery store or, or a lemon. <laughs> yeah, lemon. <laughs> You know, but an avocado at three dollars per fruit. You know, if you have a tree, trees can produce like almost two hundred pounds of fruit on one tree. You know, that's substantial amount of money. And they're and, good for you. Yeah, 
Joan Collins, Brian, as you know, yeah. eats an avocado every single day. Still? And she said that keeps her skin looking good. I don't know if Joan Collins is still alive. <laughs> yeah. She is? She's still alive, yes. Okay. Uh, How old is she? Oh, she's in her 80s. Really? Yes. Because she looks like she's 45. Hey, it's, it's all those avocados. <laughs> From those avocados. From all those avocados. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I was going to ask Tiger to tell us. Uh, we're talking about avocados, mm -hmm. and people want to plant avocados. Right. Yeah. But what do you do? Where do you get them? Right. I mean, that's the tough thing. I mean, you know, we're talking about finding some of these varieties, and it's very challenging to find unique varieties of avocado because, like you say, you know, I can you can find a Haas, you can find a find a bacon, a Fuerte, um, you know, the holiday avocado. These are all common varieties, so those are easy to get your hands on. But the other ones, you do have to kind of research in your area where maybe you find a, a local. Uh, fruit tree grower that's going to have some of the unique varieties and you just call around if you can find them. Um, Ed, right. Ed's place, Birchill, yeah. online. You know, you can look online and you might be able to find some. I wonder how, if Ed's still listening, I wonder how they ship oh, them. Ed's, Ed's with us. I wonder how they ship them. Are they going to ship them in those tall um, boxes, you know, with the, you know, I wonder how they ship you those avocados. Because, you know, that was one of the, the challenge is to get a, a good size plant, you mm -hmm. know, shipping wise. And, you know, they have to be in those. Well, they're more starter plants. It's not going to be like going to Mission Hills and getting a 15 gallon tree. I, I'll tell you one thing, John, I said this a few weeks ago. I, it, it might as well be a starter plant, what you're seeing in the market nowadays for citrus, because the five gallons are not that big. <laughs> I'm sure Ed's starter plant is probably bigger than some of the five gallons we're getting in stock at Mission Hills Nursery from some of the citrus growers. So, um, you know, but it gives you the chance to find some cool varieties. Yeah. He said, Ed says you can get a, a tall box for a number five. Does that mean, must mean five gallon. Five gallon. Or you can get a five by 12 inch starter. starter. Okay. Yeah. I mean, see, that's probably what you're going to find at a nursery right now. But you're yeah. not going to get navel. No, but you're <laughs> no navel avocados. Exactly. Um, well, no one wants to know how long until she gets fruit. Ooh, so I, so I wanted to bring this up because is that going to vary? Well, there's always you know number one is and we've mentioned this a number of times and and I just always re rehash it out that people have this idea that they take the avocado, they put the little toothpicks in it, they grow it in the vase of water. It sprouts, and then they're going to plant We that. did that in first grade. Yes. Okay. And You know, had you done that, you'd be getting <laughs> you fruit by now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And if you started an avocado from seed, you could be, you know, 15 years, 20, 15 20, to 20 years. 20 years. Or you could be two to three years, like it, the Don Galagli's right? case. Exactly. So, um, so, you know, that's the seed. Now, from a five-gallon plant to a fruiting tree you're probably looking at about maybe two to three years okay but that's like a couple fruit a five gallon plant to a crop you're probably looking i think would you say five years maybe john i usually tell people three to five years yeah you can usually get a couple avocados you know within three years and and they always tell you pick them off, but I don't know anyone who's a gardener gonna, that would yeah, take off the fruit yeah, at any I'm gonna time. I'm going to eat that thing. Yeah. <laughs> that one fruit. So, yeah, I mean, five years. Um, you know, in a 15 gallon, you're going to cut years, a couple years. Five years, I think years. you're in full production. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, yeah. you know, and then a 15 gallon, you can cut that down. So, full production in three years. In a 24 inch box, you can probably be one year away from full production if you're growing avocados. Did you see uh, Ron's uh, question, John? Yeah, uh, I was just looking at that. Uh, Ron, you don't say where you are, uh, but he says he's been babying an avocado for about five years, and he covers it every time he gets a freeze warning. But when he bought it, the nurserymen said it was self-pollinating. The wood's still really small in diameter, and the tree doesn't seem to be thriving. And when it blooms, all the blooms drop. So... First of all, it does depend where you were. Oh, Bakersfield. Mm. And it does get cold. Yeah, yeah. it does get cold in, in Bakersfield. And Let's take a quick break before we uh, continue with that answer. 
Again, uh, questions, comments, Facebook Live. It is Avocado, Avocado Weekend here on Garden America. Going to take a break. I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Bignasco. And again, for Biz Talk Radio, back after these messages. Do stay with us. All right, we continue sailing on on this uh, Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, depending upon where you are. Thank you for tuning in, supporting us. It's good to see you. Good to have you. Good to be seen. And, of course, uh, I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Magnasco. Let's finish, uh, finish off with that answer. John, we had to take a break. We're back. Yeah, we were talking about, um, was it Ron we were talking to? Yes. That has been babying an avocado in Bakersfield. And he mm-hmm. said that the nurseryman told him it was hardy down to seven down to 27 27 degrees degrees. Mm -hmm. but one of the problems is whenever you're getting a late frost in bakersfield if the tree is blooming when the frost comes it's going to freeze the blooms and that's the important fruiting part right right yeah but um ed ed mentions that giving it a dose a heavy dose of fst which is a fertilizer made by eb stone yeah the 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 other brand name is green all eb stone has couple brands uh-huh. and green all makes fst okay yeah. and uh ed says that 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 will stimulate production yeah and you know we've talked about this before and fst um it's a fertilizer has magnesium iron um sulfur in it and citrus trees require some of those micronutrients and other nutrients that aren't found in normal right. fertilizers. Same with avocados. And so, mm-hmm. you know, avocados fall in that same thing where you, you can't just give it a fertilizer, you know, like even we, we love talking about milorganite, but you know, citrus trees and avocados need other micronutrients to actually have good production. And so you want to give them, you want to change it up a little bit um, right. when you're fertilizing because not all not there's not one fertilizer that has everything. I think FST stands for some trees. Does it? No, <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> no idea what trees, it stands yeah. for. I don't but know. But that's either. how I would remember it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as Bakersfield poor production, the other thing you know people need to remember mm-hmm. too in Bakersfield, we talk about the cold, but also avocados are also very susceptible to heat, meaning. You know, the the branches get burned, um, the trunks get burned if there's not enough foliage on it, um, and that could damage the tree as well. So if you're you're not getting good foliage on your tree in the summertime, and then now the tree is weakening because it's getting sunburned, which then in the, you know, blooming cycle and stuff like that, leading to a weaker tree, you know, because he says it's been just struggling. Normally, normally it should do well during some point in the year. Right, right. And if yeah. it's not doing well in some point of the year, I think you have a bigger issue where maybe, you know, you're you're not getting good foliage production in the summer and now the tree is now weaker going into the winter when you are going to get the fruiting cycle as well. And it points out that uh Bakersfield uh because of the climate that avocados <clears throat> can take 7 plus years to begin the fruit. Oh wow. So Anyway, try the FST fertilizer, yeah. uh, especially this time of year. Not this time of year. I would wait another month and then try it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Rick wants to know if you prune them. Uh, no. I think you leave them alone, right? 
Yeah. yeah. Unless you, you know, are trying to prune to shape. But again, if you're in a hot area, uh, be careful of what Tiger says so you don't get sunburn. You know, we were talking about taking some old avocado orchards and converting them from Fuerte into Haas. When they cut those trees down and you just have the stumps, you've probably seen this, Brian, they go through and they paint them all white. And that's not so people don't trip over them. It's so that they don't get sunburned. Right. It's because, like a, sun, a suntan lotion, basically. Right, because that, yep. that trunk has never been exposed to hot sun. You know, it's been shaded all that time. You've always liked to use the analogy when we talk about these kind of things, as far as an indoor plant or taking a plant outside for the first time, like being indoors all winter, and then you decide to go to the beach without yeah. suntan lotion. You're going to burn. Yeah, and, and the burning will create flaking bark or wounds, mm -hmm. and it, al it almost does look like burn, black. Tree melanoma, on... we call it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, you do have to be careful with that. Debbie's got some success. Mine tastes good. Just got 10 healthy big avocados. Really? Oh, good for her. I go to Major Market in Fallbrook, and they sell Fallbrook avocados. Yeah. And they're two ninety eight each. Wow. When they, there's a little sign that says, this avocado was on the tree this morning. Yeah. It could have been. Could have been. But um, I often see, I'm, do you touch your avocados when you buy them? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, you, you, yeah, you don't want to get one that's too far gone, right? Well, you have to time it out. Yeah, you right. know, that's you, exactly you right. You know, if you're going to use it when you get home, right. it's got to be ready to go right then and there. Right, so yeah. it's got to be soft enough for you to be able to open it up when you get home. But now if you're not going to use it for a day or two, right. you now, don't want to Put avocados one. in the refrigerator. That's supposed to uh, degrade the flavor. Mm -hmm. But if you don't put them in the refrigerator, <laughs> they ripen really fast. That is the challenge. Yeah, they do. And then if you have an avocado tree, you pick them on the tree and then you know, ripen that, them on the counter. That's a good point to bring bring up because avocados do not ripen on the tree. No. Yeah. So uh, unlike other fruits, which can turn mushy, rot, and fall off, you don't have to worry you know, about that You know, this is like avocados. when I go out and buy bananas on the weekend for the for the following week. <laughs> I always buy that. about four or five that are still green, a little yep. green, and then maybe maybe about three of them that are ready to eat. So that way So the progression tomorrow, during the week is they start one. to ripen up, and by the yeah. end of the week, you know, most of them are, are ripe and ready to go. You yeah. always eat your avocado or your bananas green, though. No, I don't. I no. remember you bringing them in here. They're not even close no, to ripe. I don't like They green still bananas. have some green in them. <laughs> They've got to be. Brought, when's the last time I brought a banana in here? It's been a while, but I wait to eat a banana until it's until yellow. It's ready for, for, for uh, banana bread. That's no, no, really it's got to be yellow and just starting with some little black dots on it. Yeah, no. that's when it's ripe. No, John, you, still you can talk green. about avocados all day, but when it comes to bananas, <laughs> you're wrong. Um, I like. You know what? I th with with De my wife Dana, she like. I'm trying to think if she likes them more. Now John is right to a certain degree that I'll. I'll eat it a little before. Yeah. And then Dana likes to wait until it's like ready for banana bread. I think. How do you how do you open an avocado? So you're gonna you make mean a, you mean a banana. No, I'm gonna say I'm back to avocado. Oh, like how I, do you open a avocado? I cut it down the middle and uh -huh. I twist it off and pull it apart. Okay. Yeah. How do you get the seed out? Oh, you don't take the seed out. You leave the seed well, in there. Unless you're no, using the you're whole using avocado. the whole avocado. Uh -huh. How do you take the seed out? Twist it I just pull it out. I don't yeah. Is, there a, take, is there a technique? Take a knife. You I take a knife. knife I, hit, the, I right. hit the seed with oh, the knife. I see. And you loosen it, it up. And then I pull okay. the yeah. seed out yeah. with the knife. Okay. Yeah. No, but I mean, everybody does different ways, right? right. Because, Here, here's why I you thought know. you were asking me about bananas. Most people <laughs> most people take the end and right. peel it off. But not monkeys. But the other side that looks like that little black belly button, yeah. Yeah. that's how you really peel a banana. And that's how monkeys peel you, it. You punch it with your thumb and it splits right apart. Yeah. It's another case of monkey see, monkey do for you, exactly. Brian. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I want to give a avocado to a monkey and see how they open it. Well, if they can't open it, they'll throw it right back at you. <laughs> we'll log with something else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> to show their displeasure. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I was going to ask Tiger, what are your favorite varieties of avocado? Or does it not make any difference? No, I mean, Zutano... You like um, Zutano? Yeah. Pinkerton, because it's different. Look at all these avocados that are not really mainstream. We're really talking about hundreds of oh, varieties of avocados. I, I mean, there's, I don't even know. I don't You're think, saying there might be a, what was the I don't zoo? think I've had enough avocados 
to know which ones I like better than others. I, you know what you should do then is go to um, like a farmer's market mm -hmm. in Fallbrook. And buy or, a or few somewhere. varieties. Because they're going to have growers that have the unique varieties. I don't even think, have you, when was the last time you went to the Fallbrook Avocado Festival? Oh, I try to stay away. Right, but, but uh, you've gone. I know you have. Yeah, I think I, I didn't even, go last year. But they don't even have all the varieties. I didn't go. I never even see avocados there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if you go to a farmer's market yeah. during ripened if season. If you go online, there's places that, that uh, you can buy a box of avocados. Yeah. that will give you like five or six different varieties in the box. Because, yeah, you're not going to be Melissa's able produce to is one of them. find them at a grocery store. So, you know, you go to a farmer's market, you're going to have a pick of different, you know, right. avocados like we're talking about. And that's when you're going to try them and find the different ones that you like with different flavors. We're going to take a break. We have two more segments coming up on this uh, Saturday morning where we are, maybe Saturday afternoon where you are. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Those on the Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live, keep the avocado questions coming or anything else you have in mind as we take this break uh, for these messages on Biz Talk Radio. We have returned just like that. A lot of people tuned in this morning. Avocado, the topic. Avocados, the topic. Our subject matter. And we're going to be uh, continuing that theme next week uh, when our guest is with us. Uh, but for the time being, let's uh, continue with the avocado talk and anything else you want to bring to the table. Yeah, thanks to Tiger, we just lost a listener. Uh-oh. Uh, Debbie said that she's going to the farmer's market now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, that's okay. We've wet your well, appetite. I would say right now you're not going to find many avocado varieties, though, so that would be you know, a bummer. Ed points that says he likes Pinkerton and Reed, and Reed is a variety you can find even in the supermarket yes. sometimes. It's uh, You'll notice it right away because it's round. Yeah. About the, it, it looks like a ball. Like yeah, a, like a softball, yeah. right? Like an orange or something. More, more of a fruit-shaped ball. Right, and not as dark as uh, a lighter green skin than uh, a Haas. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's so funny though. He says Reed, but then Pinkerton is like the opposite because they're skinny and long. So he likes like the polar opposite styles of fruit. Like a bad and ball. Hey, yeah, John, it is. <laughs> isn't Pinkerton like one of the oldest detective agencies? Yeah. Around? Yeah. It was in the and railroad. Old, yeah, going back most to. Most people don't remember that they were founded uh, under an avocado tree, a Pinkerton avocado tree. That's the name. Yeah. Is that true? No, I'm making that up. I just made that up. <laughs> I was like, "Where's that chain?" I'm gonna but anyway, yeah. tiger. Anyway, if, if you look for a reed, I, I, for one, think that reed. I mean, Haas is the avocado I buy all the time. Yeah, but if I can buy a reed, I think reed is even better than a, a Haas. Yeah. Are all know, avocados green? No, I mean no. No, we just mentioned we just, that yeah. Haas is black. Um, Mexico is purple. Purple. Purple is purple is a plum. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't even look like an avocado. It's like the different color bananas. There, I, I feel like I I've even seen some with like different shit. Like for instance, Pinkerton we go back to, the flesh is more yellowy than green also mm. on the inside. So maybe that's what they're asking. Is the flesh on the inside always green? Oh. Um and there are some that are more yellowish. I feel like I've even seen one that kind of had a little bit of a a pinkish flesh or you know before as well you mean like a pinkish hue yeah yeah <laughs> i've had some that are black inside <laughs> <laughs> that's not good that's called rotten <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah hey dana says that you guys could use an avocado in your backyard yeah right it is a state fruit you know that <laughs> i've told you that we've taken the the plants and then we've moved them out to the which is actually the hoa property and the sidewalk leading to the unit right i'm pushing my luck Get rid of get rid of some of those palms. Get rid of no. Because that's my favorite tree. They're no. worthless. And I get an palm. avocado. No, I love palms. But you know, Dana's got a point. You can eat avocados. Yeah. You can what eat. can you eat in your backyard right now? Oh, I find things to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> things that you have no idea. I'm uh, out there. What are you doing out there? Never mind. Like <laughs> a little chipmunk in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you know, pests. Avocados. They don't. They yeah. aren't. Super plagued by bugs, 
which is nice. Because they can't get through that skin. <laughs> but um, but rats and rodents, they love avocados. Right. Well, That's they can, a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Now, we like to say. What about know, avocado mites, the per se mite? But is that super common? It was years ago. Yeah. Maybe know. they've brought in some predators and I don't know. not so I, much now. I just feel like I, I don't get a lot of problems. But it, there are, I'm not saying it's not existent, but, you know, there's not a lot compared to other trees, right. you know, that have problems annually. Avocados are not as bad, which Rick, is nice. Rick wants to know if they use avocados to make other products. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Avocado oil. Yeah. Uh, they use, uh, you know, a lot, you can buy Pam that has avocado oil in it now. Yeah. Oh, I did the last jar of mayonnaise I bought. Was that avocado, avocado oil. Man? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, what was I just thinking of? Uh, they face some face creams, right? A lot of mm -hmm. a lot of face creams and lotions right. put avocado oil in. Them. I'm if I'm not mistaken, I saw a recipe for avocado pie. Oh yeah. I mean, well, they, I don't know I'm about sure that. They have, they have you go to that you go to that avocado festival. Ice cream. Yeah, you go to that festival, you got avocado ice cream. You know, you know who and eats avocado pie. ice cream all the time? Your good buddy Tom Brady. It's all he talks about. It's part of his diet. Avocado really? ice cream? Yep. Where does he get it? I when you're him, you get anything yeah. you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. And, and and you know what? If, he probably has somebody making it. For and him. if it doesn't exist, he pays somebody to invent it. Yeah. <laughs> Grasshoppers can be a problem. Veronica says. He said, uh, Yeah, hmm. they're not going to hurt the, the avocado fruit. No, fruit. They're just going to the be tree. a nuisance. Right. And they come in, the nice, the nice thing about grass, they come and go. <laughs> Unless not. you've got a pair of pruning shears with you <laughs> yeah. and you yeah. just cut them Catch right them. in half. Yeah. Those, those are some of the worst bugs when you're out there working and they land on you and you feel those little barbs land on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes your skin crawl. I last year I had a lot of grasshoppers. I don't know if it's because of the dry weather. Does dry weather make? It was the start of the I plague. I kind of think they're cool. I don't. They don't bother me much. Let them do their thing. <laughs> yeah, grasshoppers. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's a biblical proportion. Swarm. I was going to say it's yeah. unless it's a swarm. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah, if you have a plague of grasshoppers, that's not good. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Our good friend in Brentwood, Jan, says that her lemons are all ripe now. Ooh. Yeah, this is, uh, mm -hmm. lemons are, it, down here it seems like you can pick lemons almost all year round, right? Yep. Right. Because you've got lemons ripening right now, but then you've got new ones starting. Right. So nice. Yeah, definitely no shortage of lemons here. Um, man, what was I just thinking about ripening? Oh, and then, you know what I love? now also is that when you go in the grocery store the cuties or the halos oh data by the cuties all they, the time they switch varieties again so now they're the i don't know which you know because it's hard to determine sometimes the variety right. but like they're the easier to peel ones versus back in december when they were the really tough ones with mm -hmm. thin skin to peel yeah but they were sweet yeah right but i'd rather peel them easier i get i get more satisfaction <laughs> I get frustration. You know, uh, the citrus kind of relate to avocado because when you buy food, it's always citrus and avocado food, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe Ed knows this, but the I'm trying to think of the number. You know, the the marketing name for the the mandarin that just I think finished being sold in the stores with the sumo mandarin, mm -hmm. and you cannot buy sumo mandarins because I think that name is trademark by Sunkist or one of the the packing companies but that tree came out of UC Riverside mm. and I think it has some number to it what do you mean and, like the like the name is a number yeah like N96 oh, okay. 234 or something <laughs> <laughs> I don't know um but I'm wondering if anybody can grow that tree and market it retail under that that name mm. Um, if you find out, Ed, and you can do that, 
I'll buy one. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd so like you, to thank Ed for being our Facebook guest this morning on yeah. Avocados and chiming in. Much appreciated. And answering all the questions. Exactly, making our job right. easier. Hey, David's got a question about uh, dwarf avocados for places like the San Fernando Valley. Yeah, we talked Ooh. about that already. And that gets hot. Yeah. Right, and uh, the varieties we mentioned were, uh, you know, I think it's Gwen. But yeah. th then there's also Holiday. Holiday's a good one. And probably the one I would recommend. The nice thing about Holiday is because it has that weeping effect, mm -hmm. it's easy to pick the avocados. Mm -hmm. You know, because the branches just hang down, the avocados grow, you walk up and pick one. And then uh, Tigers mentioned Little Cotto, which is one that's easy to find, but I would pick that. Yeah, it's also, my last choice. Also known as Wurtz. I'm looking up other avocado right. to see Look if up you're... Gwen I was to, gonna, I'm looking up that right now. Right, because... G-W-E-N? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, to find out which one it is so we can solve that problem there. Um, but Wurtz, yeah, Wurtz and um, Little Cotto are the same. Yeah, I think Little Cotto is a trademark. And then... Um, Wurtz is the actual variety name. Yeah. Brian, you can talk while Tiger and I are playing on our computers. <laughs> yeah, you guys are playing various games on your computers. Let's see here. Break time coming up in just about uh, 60 seconds. We have one more segment after this. Still plenty of time to get your questions, your comments in. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people tuned in this morning. This is a very, very good subject. We do want to remind you next week uh, we'll have our guest on. be talking about the avocados again in a more, uh, more extensive way. We'll expand it next week for you. Gwen. Gwen. Is a good container one. Okay, okay. we're going to take a break and right Gwen now. Gwen is the best tasting, Brian. Which one? Gwen. Best tasting. Right. i got to find one then at a farmer's market, right? If it's a dwarf. Okay. Got it. You right should now. get that for Dana. <laughs> Does she have a birthday coming up? <laughs> Who, Dana? Yeah. In July. In July? Yeah. It's down the road. We have to stay on time for the network, which means we're going to take a break. One more segment coming up after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Okay, this is it. Our final segment on this uh, weekend, Saturday. Hope you're having a good one. Don't forget to go to our uh, YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. Like and subscribe. Also, our website. Goodness gracious. Newly renovated website at, uh, as John likes to say, www.gardenamerica.com. Tiger, <laughs> exactly. check it out. Right. It's got a new look, a fresh look, and you can just have all kinds of fun. You can spend hours on our website. Lots of great information and past articles, yeah. podcasts, mm -hmm. things that we dove deep into. Um, you know, mostly answering just questions that everybody has when it comes to gardening so if, you're, if yeah. you have a question we probably have the answer there somewhere and if we don't have the answer we'll make it up yeah you'll never or, not get an answer or listen to the next show and mm -hmm. then we will answer it for you right here we'll get our crack research team on it we never talk about our research team they stay behind the scenes yeah and they're they're kind of shy they're you know they got the glasses kind of nerdy <laughs> they don't like a lot of attention but uh, what was the crack part of that <laughs> It's all you heard, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's all John I, heard. I was busy on my computer. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember talking crack. about <laughs> crack. So Ed says the sumo is a trademark. It's involved in all kinds of controversy. Uh-oh. Ooh, stay away from that. That wasn't John. my question, Ed. My question was, <laughs> how can I get one? Uh -oh. I like Carla. Thanks, guys. And Ed. Yeah. For another right. interesting show. We still have six minutes to go. The show's still on. After the show, I'll be heading over to Mission Hills Nursery to tomato take mania. a look at tomato mania. You want any tomatoes? Sure. What are you looking for? He wants a dwarf <laughs> tomato. I'll get him the spoon one. A super dwarf. A not, spoon one. That's not dwarf. <laughs> just the size of the fruit. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. But you get a lot of little tomatoes. It's okay. They worked last year. Yeah. Did you grow a spoon tomato last what year? What was it last year? It was. I don't um, know. No, a spoon, a spoon, spoon tomato tomatoes. is called spoon because in a teaspoon, you can fit about ten tomatoes. No, yes, no, it was bigger. <laughs> yeah, it was you very had a good. Cherry we got a lot of cherry, cherry tomato. Yeah, yeah. It was or very did good. he? Did you get him one of the? Uh, what was that heirloom tomato last year? The tomato of the year. I don't remember. I guarantee I'm going to remember from can't. now on though. Yeah. Um, and it produced well into October. Yeah, I mean. You know, you know, tomatoes for us 
have great production. There's that big tomato field. What's that freeway that is runs east to west, John? And there's that big to, tomato fields along it. The 76 up there in Oceanside. Um, oh, this, well, the 76 does run, run east to west, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you're driving along it, and there's just. Well, when you giant... go out to five north of Oceanside, those were all tomato fields. North on the five north of Oceanside? Yeah. 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 That's kind of like where it's at, right? They're, yeah. And, and you... then it goes inland from there. Right. And you smell the pig fertilizer when they put it out. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you know, it seems like they're always growing tomatoes. Right. It well, really does. A, a sweet tomato. There you go. Yeah. There you I don't go. need a big one. Sweet. <laughs> a sweet Small, tomato. sweet, little cherry tomatoes. All right. Love them. Let's see what's out there. It did, did the, real the, well, the, too. The tomato this year was Bronze Torch. So maybe you want to try that one. It's kind of a, yeah. a smallish smoky, smoky, tomato. Uh, smoky flavor. Yeah. yeah. The Torch, the name Torch. The torch. Shh. Exactly. Um. But yeah, I'll be heading down to the nursery after this. So take a look at all the fun festivities with Tomato Mania. Why don't you take a little short little video? Now, are okay. varieties going to be sold out by the time you get there? Um, Could be, huh? Possibly. Possibly. They do bring back stock. So they, they, they plan to have enough all the way through Sunday. Take a little, short little maybe 30, 60 seconds of all the people. Just kind of give us a little feel. Post it on Facebook. Will do. People can say, hey, I want to do that next year. Yeah. All right. Ed says we can get... A sumo mandarin from Birchall Nursery. Oh, look at that. He's uh, you Go to tomorrowsharvest.com and look for the name Shiranui. That's a sumo? Yeah. But that's how they name it? Right. Okay. Shiranui. Shiran Shiranui. All right. When I get home, I'm going to go online and order one. And look for the uh, Zumatron. <laughs> also, I got to watch out for the Zoomatron that yeah. I, doesn't trip me while I'm <laughs> walking from the living room to the bedroom. <laughs> there's some fun fruit names, right? Yeah. I mean, but even the Haas, there's Lamb Haas, there's Haas, there's Carmen Haas. There's... Sub varieties? Yeah. Put their little twist on the Haas. <laughs> what did you. <laughs> the. From the Ponderosa? Ponderosa, though. Yeah, from Bonanza. Little Haas. Little Haas. Yeah. Little Joe. <laughs> Big I Joe. probably never even watched Ponderosa. No, but I did go to where I was in Tahoe, and See? I went there. Isn't that funny? Never so, saw the show, no right. background, but yet he goes to where it was filmed. Yes. That, so did you have any background on it when you Not went there? Not a clue. You have to. Do you have Hulu? Or you got? You can watch <laughs> watch an old episode. Get a feel for it because oh. it was the only show on TV where the three sons were actually older than the father in real life. <laughs> no way. No, I just oh, it just God. appeared that way. They they all looked old. I except think for of my Joe. three sons. What's that? <laughs> You're thinking of my no, three sons. No, if you look at if you look at Haas, Haas looked older than his dad. It's a, it's a running it's an old running joke about but Michael up. Landon looked no, he young didn't. though. Right. Well, he was very, very young. He ate avocado. And then he started he started directing later shows and that's well, where he became a producer. A lot of people, Tiger might have seen Little House on the Prairie, right? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm well, aware of it. Well, that's yeah. Michael Landon. See, yeah. I never saw Little so House he was, on the Prairie. He was in but, the Ponderosa? But I did see him. He was the youngest brother in the show. Right. Oh. There was Adam, there was Haas, and then Little Joe, and then uh, Hop Singh was the caretaker of the house. I thought he was the and cook. What was the dad? And the name? cook, well, what cook, caretaker. Name? Ben, Ben Cartwright. And they had a lot of money and owned a lot of land. They were very rich. Oh. Back in the 1800s. And you didn't mess with the family. So it's it's kind of like today's Yellowstone show. Have you seen you know, Yellowstone yet? I don't know how to. I've been trying to watch Yellowstone, and uh -huh. I can't watch it. <laughs> I mean, I, how do I find it? You mean in general? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I, I want to watch um, going to the first season. If I go to Hulu, I can watch the, this season. Right. But this says, I think, season five, right? Right. Uh, so You know what Hulu's going to do? They're going to give you season one free. And then you're ready to go to yeah. season two. Oh, twenty nine ninety five. They don't no. do that. But um, Paramount TV, I think, has it all. Otherwise, you, have to you gotta buy. You have to pay for Paramount. Yeah, it's another subscription. You pay thing. for everything. Or, or you can go it's on nice. Amazon, but you're gonna have to buy the series. Hey, we're gonna have to say goodbye just oh, like no. that. Thank you so much, and I hope all you people watching will return next week and be with us as we continue our avocado topic. Yeah.
and but get we're going to be talking about more about the distribution and the of distribution it, right? food security. So have yourself a good so rest of your weekend. Our guests are going to be Justin West and Ed Livo next week. <laughs> Justin West and Ed Livo. Ed returns next week. Thank you, Ed. Thanks really for joining us. It. Thank you, Ed. Absolutely. Have yourself a good rest of your weekend. A good, safe week. And again, we are back here with more avocado talk next week and our guest. So be with us right here on Garden America. I'm Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. See you then back here on the radio and back on Facebook Live. Take care.